in this box I have one of the most confusing disc releases, at least to me, because this is the new Axiom Tempo. As you can see, it's from the 2023 Circuit Challenge, basically MVP's Trilogy Challenge, where you get three discs, you have to play a tournament with them. And a massive shout out to Caleb Hilt, because he ran some of these challenges and was able to send me out this Neutron Tempo, 172 grams, as well as just this really cool watermelon hex. So we're definitely gonna throw this a couple times. So just a massive thank you for sending that out, but I wanna compare this today because Neutron is typically a pretty overstable plastic from Axiom to my Banana Club Zone, which is a Z Zone. I think this is max weight, and we're gonna play a full 18 holes. But I'd definitely be remiss if I didn't tell you that we have some more Banana Club Zones on my website, bedanzadiscount.com. There are not very many of them, but I do have them now uplinked by color. So if you want a specific color, you can buy that. And all my future disc drops, you'll be able to choose at least the color of the disc. Sometimes the disc and the stamp, but typically just like choose a blue and you'll either get like this foil, right, those are the same, so bad example. Nice. We're here today for what seems like it's gonna be a pretty, <laughs> pretty windy round at Lower Badlands, a course that was just reinstalled here in Denver, which I'm really loving, but is right now very short because they just had their two rounds of Junior Nationals here. We're gonna play the long layout, which just has three or four different long holes. But the reason that this release was kinda weird to me is that I remember there being a decent bit of hype for the tempo but it hasn't even come out yet. And this was back in like March, April, May. And I think it's because it was just PDGA approved and people were getting super pumped and excited for it. And then they released it with a circuit challenge and it still hasn't come out in a stock run yet. So I think it's gonna come out soon. We'll talk about the flight numbers as well as the feel of it as we throw. Gonna throw the zone first, 320 feet down to that basket. We're gonna give it some flex, but there's left to right wind. We just really wanna kinda crash into that tree and get a little lucky. I do think this will be slightly less stable than the zones though. Get around it, or under it. Oh, that's perfect, actually. Okay. Oh, maybe it is. A little less flex out of the hand. Oh, branch, dang. I guess it's a less lucky disc, that's for sure. Uh, I'm gonna look up these flight numbers real fast. If I remember correctly, I thought it was like 4403. And it's hard to judge off of one throw, but it might just, it seems a little faster than the zones, honestly. Image coming soon. Okay, manufacturer, okay, 440, and of course it's Axiom, so it has to have a 2.5 in there. And then 440, 2.3 are the review numbers. Do they have them for sale yet? I didn't think they had them for sale. And honestly, I don't even know when this is gonna come out. I just really wanted to make this review because I wanted to throw that disc so bad. <laughs> Oh, no, come on. So what I feel initially from this tempo is that it is a little bit slimmer or like thinner than a zone, which is kind of weird because zone already is not a very like deep disc. It's relatively thin. Like you have your Razor Claw 3s, your Tactics, those are much deeper. That's the same disc. The Toro is pretty similar to the Zone. And I honestly can't really remember a lot of other discs in that category. I'm probably forgetting like a major one. And I don't have any plans to switch from Zones anytime soon. They're very comfortable on forehand and backhand. This feels equally as comfortable. If not, it's kind of like, even with my very small hands, my finger's almost getting over the edge there. So you have bigger hands, this might actually be a disc that's not like big hands approved, where there's a lot of not baby hands approved discs. This might be one of the ones that you can't throw very comfortably if you have bigger hands, because it already feels a little shallow in my hands. It's super, super board flat. Got a little puddle top on this zone, but the one thing I will say is this plastic from MVP, Axiom, whatever, uh, feels absolutely incredible. I'm pretty sure this is the Neutron. I would throw this plastic over this plastic almost any day. Here's the thing, if this thing beats the zone, it's going to my Patreon weekly giveaways, which I have over on Patreon, link in the description if you wanna join. You get weekly giveaways and a Discord, and you support me, that's the main things. Oh, and you get discounts on my website based on what level of support you give on Patreon. But if that thing wins today, I have to get out of my site because otherwise I might think about bagging it because already, just the feel, it's almost too uncomfortably shallow, but it's not, and the plastic, to me, feels like one and a half to two times better than almost any zone you can get because titanium isn't quite the same. Big Z not, I don't even know if you can. I don't know, something about that neutron plastic is primo. Oh no. Oh, yes, actually, very good. Get a skip. Hmm. This might be like the first decent rival for a zone. I mean, based on the flight numbers, especially if you think the zones are slightly too state. Big shout out to the whole course crew over there. They're tearing down that T pad. So we're gonna skip hole three for now, go to hole four, then three, then five. All right, zone still has the box. Headwind, left to right. So slight flex, see how stable they are to get out of it. Gave it the height, now get back. 
Oh, that's short. I need to drive that more. Forgetting that it's a 340 foot hole with an overstable approach disc. Here's the tempo. Yeah, that just seems faster. Like maybe like a four and a half speed almost. I noticed like when it comes out of my hand, I did throw it a little harder, but I noticed it on hole one as well that it kind of wants to like rip out of your hands a little bit. Maybe it's because of how thin the profile is that it like cuts through the air faster. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see if I keep thinking that throughout the rest of the round. No, dude. I hope that this one's a gimme. Thank you very much. Another interesting realization with this is so far I've tried to throw this on Annie twice and both times it's come out pretty flat. All right, it's going to Patreon right now. Back on three with this low gap shot here, OB to the left. Actually, I could probably throw these on a hyzer and get there. Not a bad first forehand of the day. Tailwind's not really gonna let it push too far right. It's his own, come on. Oh man! That was terrible. Didn't give that any height at all. I think I tried to throw it flatter, the hyzer. Felt like it was short. It's inside the circle. It was not actually short. And so I tried to throw it flat and because I threw it flat, I came over it too much and threw it into the ground, so. Pro tip, if you are only reviewing two discs and two putters, put them in the putter pocket and you got room for tons of water. 276 to that basket. Like, I feel like this is too thin, but I kind of love it. Like, it does feel faster. And also like ridiculously short of the basket. So it kind of sucks if we're being real. Doesn't mean you gotta flex it though. Mm. <laughs> we are playing some disc golf today. Ah! Apparently this tempo has some crazy luck factor because it hit the tree and rolled into circle one. Oh my gosh, this is so far. Good bid, good bid. Oh, that's so low. Oh, this is far. This is actually probably 35 feet. Doesn't matter. Dang it, man, the tempo's so good. So this is the par four from the longs. It's like 435 feet and is over and to the right. There's an OB stake line to the left. So we don't want to cross that with these, especially them being overstable and easy to get nose up when you're trying to throw an Anheuser, which will stall them out even faster. Basically what I'm trying to do on this hole, even when I play it with like a driver, is throw something stable over that back tree over there. Ah, it's a little nose up. A little more nose up than I'd want. And it's still like really didn't want to get on Annie. So let's see if that's just a me problem or maybe it's harder the disc. This seems to have like a more of like, it grips my fingers inside between the rim and the flight plate instead of that, which might be because it's deeper or the rim is shaped slightly differently. I'm not quite sure, honestly. Yeah, it's just, I feel like it's a lot easier for me to get over on that one. I don't know why. Maybe it's, I think it's because of the meteor rim. I don't know. Oh, okay. So what's interesting here is I started walking closer to the basket and the zone was almost in line perfectly with it, with the tempo, but just like a better angle. So I do think there's probably is something to the fact that the tempo for me, it seems a bit faster and then it calls itself a four glide instead of three. Might be the case. This one's also puddle topped, which I tend to prefer. Okay, good run, good run. This is another great hole to kind of test um, the ways that I'm throwing these poorly, which is on that Anheuser. We could throw a forehand through here and have it finished, but it looks like the play is an Anheuser that's kind of driven, that stables out through the gap. Kind of like that. Kind of exactly like that. I feel like my life is a lie right now. The big problem for me is I don't even have the excuse that the tempo is going second, so it's getting to figure out what the zone does. I don't want to say anything too fast, especially it's not even out yet. And I like my zones. Oh man. Go in the basket. See, I like my zones. No, come on! A lot of you guys might ask about the entropy, which is, I think, MVP or Axiom's other zone-like disc. From what I understand, it's a little deeper and a lot more stable than this tempo is. I personally never actually thrown an entropy. So I'm sure someone will make a video that compares those, but I seem to understand that this is supposed to be slightly more glidey. I'm also interested to see how different plastics affect the stability here. 
Oh, and the rain is really starting to pour, so we gotta put your little umbrella on ya. It's been a while since I reviewed a disc and compared it to something in my bag and felt like the thing in my bag was inferior for me, at least. I don't think the zone is by any means, obviously, but maybe the way that my hand fits this disc is better. Maybe I just really like throwing new plastic. Maybe I just really like the neutron plastic. All those are pointing to bad things for the zone staying in my bag forever. Here's a great chance to figure some stuff out. 315 feet down the hill. I think we're gonna need to put just a touch of flex out of the hand. Yeah, it's a little bit of a pump with these, especially not trusting my footing. It's always gonna make it throw a little shorter. Come on, let's get one back. Ah, push it a little harder, but I slipped a little more, so it's a little more nose up. So this is two times in like four videos now where the microphone is just turned off and unpaired. It does not like me talking to you guys, I guess. Hopefully it hasn't been too long, um, but welcome back to listening to me ramble. I threw some good shots, I think. I think I might have thrown the tempo slightly too hard. Woo. The fact that these were a little wet was so in my head when I made that putt. All right, we're starting to get on the set of cool holes that add a lot to Denver disc golf. That last one, interesting. I mean, a lot of these are very unique to Denver right now. I think we're building a couple more courses, which will be really cool. It's in a short position now. You can't see it. It's just along the left side down this tunnel. It's not super far, so I think both of these are going to be just soft flexes out of the hand. Honestly, with this, probably want to throw it close to the ground on a soft flex, because if it skips to the right, you got to look, and if it gets to full flight, you're pretty good. Okay, the tempo has the luck factor going on. Man, that was inside. I when I down tempo, I tend to early release. I gotta figure out, I think it's because I'm trying to fully coil, but I think I just need to be here and then pop it. I'll try that. Kind of reminds me of like a Simon or a Chris Dickerson. Okay, I think I was aiming that way. It wasn't early though. I'm gonna try that again with the hex because I like, I like that. It felt better. Oh, okay. We're figuring things out. Not the best throws, but I think I figured something out that can help with my form. Instead of fully coiling, just a baby coil and do your normal hit instead of trying to do a full coil and a baby hit. Nice. Oh no. I got behind this thing. Just a little forehand in. Nice. No way. Oh man. That's disappointing. I thought that was in the top chain. This one finally has the box, and I can't believe we got a bogey. Hole 11 is a good one. It is straight down this gap, finishing to the right, 250-ish feet. We threw it right into the bush. Well, if those weren't like almost the exact same flights, I don't know what to tell you. It's been way too long since I've made a really big putt here on the channel. Oh, it's gonna stay too long. Let's go, oh my gosh! The zone's just screwed, I don't know what to tell you, man. Tempo just did not want to give the zone the box for more than one hole, man. Hole 12, straight ahead of us there. Low-ish ceiling. Pretty good, I'd say that's pretty good. Sometimes, this is a weird thing. Sometimes I find that my first shot, like player one, is like 50 ratings points higher than player two. That might just be the case today. Like, I don't know if it's the diss or what, but sometimes if I throw in a good shot, my mind goes, oh great, you did it. You don't have to think about it again. And then I just like shank the next one. It's a very weird thing. Let's see how player three is with the hex and the ace run. Well, remember I throw it down the gap. As you can expect, the tempo is just absolutely bizarre, so. Ah! The one thing this has made me think of is typically, the more baseline plastic zones feel a little shallower. At least they have to me in the past. Maybe I'm going crazy for that thought. But they also probably fly much more similar to this tempo because they typically have a little bit less fade and a little bit more glide. I have wanted to put a putter plastic zone in the bag and I'm probably taking out my Crystal Flex one because I want it to act like a putter plastic one, but it just doesn't, especially not up here in Colorado. 
it acts much closer to that Z zone than it did at sea level because a lot of that mid-flight is just sucked out. So I think for now, putter plastic zone might fill that slot for me, but I like that, this, oh, I like it a little bit. All right, we're getting it a little dark so you can see the sky because we're going over these trees 280 feet. You don't want to give it like a crazy amount of flex, just enough to get over and finish back left. It's a little too much flex, get back left. Okay, I think that's probably inside the circle short. We're gonna try to go a little more left with the zone, a little more ante. Or through it, or through it, or through it. No! Why did I do that? That is so disappointing. I am throwing all my second shots so poorly. Ooh. I would have probably brought one of my powder plastic zones out, but I don't have any anymore. Because I had five crystal flexes, and I was like, oh, those would be my backups. I prefer those anyways. And now that I've thrown in more and more here, I'm really missing powder plastic zones. So I'm gonna need to get a couple more of them. Oh no, that's very lucky. That's better. Finally. Thank you. Is this supposed to be OB? Oh. All right, hole 15 heading up this way. There are people walking in the fairway. I'm very glad I wasn't throwing. <laughs> Definitely didn't know there was any OB on that hole, but 15 up and to the right. Should just be a pretty simple flat to hyzer shot here. I think that should be pretty good. Oh gosh, a little slippage, get through. Oh no, you play through and everything falls apart. All right, you can see the basket over there. Shorty, there's OB over there too. That I did not realize. Okay, yeah, zone is pretty much parked. Oh my gosh, stop it. Definitely getting to the more forehand friendly part of the course, I'd guess. We're gonna go flex forehand. Zone absolutely should have gotten the birdie there, but sometimes when I do something really dumb like that, that's rushed, I'm like, I'm just gonna give it to myself. But then I'm like, no, it's like the integrity of the game. I probably would make that 10 times out of 10 if I'm not rushing, but I did, so. A little too high. I'm so scared of this tee pad right now. Just it looks so slick. And the tempo. That's the same exact shot. Better result, because it's a little faster. Go a little backhand hex. Ace it with the watermelon boy. That's a pretty stable hex, honestly. Oh, dang it. Okay, it didn't roll too far, so that's a win. Only two more. Next one's a musket. Last one will be a little tricky with a mando. Perfect. Stay up. No metal, but I think it's parked. All right, we're in mosquito heaven right now, so we gotta, oh, it's in the tree still, nice. Oh man, I felt like that was good for the first little bit of its flight. It looks like the zone rolled away on me. It's like down there, and it was hyzering in, so I had to have hit the hill and rolled away. I think the zones are in timeout right now, until I get some powder plastic ones. So if you wanna use code timeout on my store, just for the zones, you can get 10% off until they're all gone. There's not a lot of them left, so go snag one. If I make this putt, it'll be 11%. Oh, that branch only wanted it to be 10. Sorry, guys. Oh, player two. All right, last hole. So far, I've not thrown harps before. That's the one disc that I think I was forgetting in the intro. Um, that was a really popular one, maybe culprits or whatever. But Savior's not quite a great zone replacement. This disc, very good zone replacement in my opinion. I think that this is gonna be a very popular disc when it comes out. Might have to run some custom stamped ones if you guys want that when they do end up dropping. And I was also wrong, I'm pretty sure it's nine down. I thought it was only eight. So this could actually get it to 10. So that just shows you how well I'm throwing this thing just straight out of the box. And I think it's because it's like, maybe a stability that I'm more comfortable with with the way that I throw a disc. We're gonna have to throw a slight flex that'll open up the gap if we throw a flex through here. Just very slight, finish back towards the left. It is sneaky far, probably plays close to 300 feet, maybe a little less. It is like 260, I believe. A little two nose up, actually go in. It's gonna be short. Oh my gosh, it is so in timeout. Why do I suck at disc golf? And apparently if you suck at disc golf, the tempo still works. I don't understand it, but oh my gosh.
Maybe there's Harmon running it, because then you look really stupid. Oh, it's a tailwind. I didn't think it was a tailwind. Dropped it. <laughs> if I can't like figure out how to like my zones again and throw them well, that disc might go in the bag when it comes out. Especially if it comes out in a couple different plastics. Especially if it comes out in an electron plastic as well as like that or an Eclipse. I think that is gonna be in a lot of players' bags, especially who have smaller hands. Bigger hands, maybe not. The only thing that I'm semi-questionable on is approach shots, which doesn't make much sense because a lot of these are similar to approach shots, but I didn't really get the chance to throw it on a lot of approaches, and that might be where my zone does well. But I've also been like misreleasing my zone on approaches, and this one I seem, even when I misrelease it slightly, it seems to correct for my misrelease, which is helpful to have in a disc. And it shot 10 down with two bogeys at this place. But it can't do that. I feel like one of the last main competitors is what Prod calls the not zone, the Prodigy A5. Because it feels almost more similar to this than this. And I think the flight numbers are more similar to this, which I'd say are pretty accurate. 4402.5. I would probably give that the stamp of approval. Maybe call it a four and a half speed, but I think that's just because it's thinner. Definitely, whoa. I mean, you can just see that that is a thinner disc and the thinner the rim, the faster it cuts through the air which makes sense. It hasn't stolen the zone slot of my bag yet, but it potentially could, but that might be a little bit of copium because this might be a better disc for me, honestly. If you're gonna snag one of these, please do. If you wanna check out another couple disc reviews that I've done recently, this one is of the S-Line and the Color Glow P2 from Discmania to see which one is basically this guy got a five, and then the Alien from Innova Discs. Let's throw some approaches, see if it can approach as well. That was gonna be the only thing I'm worried about. I think I just like the stability of it. It's like, I don't know. I mean, I like that too. They both work. See you tomorrow.